the more of the fighting aspects of this game now. So when you do a lot of fighting, you're going to lose a lot of crew, and crew are a bit of a no a bit annoying to get uh, to get. You need to find giant cities, and you need to have a good reputation with them. Your own city is extremely helpful in that regard because your own city produces crew uh, somehow. I don't know where they come from, but they produce crew over time. And there's a uh, 133 is pretty nice. Big capital cities also produce crew for you, like these ones will, will make crew for me. There's 206 sitting there. That's fantastic. But that's only because my own city and France is I have high reputation with. You try to go to Spain or the other ones, and you have a lower reputation with them, you only will get about 30% of what they've got sitting there. So they make, Havana probably only has 30 sitting there for me. Let's see. There's 27 sitting there. 136 are available. Only 27 of them really want to come with me because I'm I'm French. So, you know, they hell with the French people, right? So you're, you're going to Havana. There's Spanish people sitting here. They don't want to work for a French king. So they're not going to go with you. That's why. So it becomes a pain to get to, to get crew up. Another thing you can do is as you travel around, you can pick up crew uh, with your, your boats. And then, so for example, 539 crew sitting here on these boats. I don't need that many crew. I probably only need about 200 crew to man on these boats or maybe 100 crew. Um, but I've collected them, and then when I need them, I'll move them over to Warmonger when he's missing crew. But right now he's got full crew at 1280. Uh, um, muskets also. The only way to get... You can't make muskets on your own. The only way to get them is just to go from town to town and to uh, pick them up and buy them. Um, also, when you... Uh, the importance of muskets, of course, are for annexing cities. I believe you can only annex a city, which means take it over for your nation which I've done with these ones here, uh, Tort uh, Antigua and Martinique. Actually, Tortuga was one where the Spanish king said, hey, the, uh, it was Spain. Tortuga uh, was owned by Spain. And then I got a mission from a French governor that says, or I mean a Spanish governor that said, hey, uh, the, the vice governor of Tortuga um, went over to the to French nation. He left us. He He's a traitor. He's a deserter. So go and take... Uh, Tortuga back from the from the French and I said okay and I went over to Tortuga and I just gave them money to increase their uh, soldiers so I went over to the vice governor hey how's it going welcome to France here have a whole bunch of money to to bump up your soldiers to let's see to 600 soldiers and then what that does is that pre prevents and let the I let the mission just expire and that prevents Spain from taking it back over uh, so now it's French territory, which is fantastic. And that's what I did take that one over. But these other ones, Antigua and Martinique, those are nation missions. The governor wanted me to take those over. And so I sent Wormonger over with 1280 crew and a lot of guns. And I just took it over because even the capital city, I think, only have about 600, 500 soldiers. Little crappy towns like Martinique only have about 200. So that was easy. Uh, so that's how you annex those. Uh, that's the purpose of having the muskets is for attacking cities. Uh, they're not for uh, crew battles. Um, okay, letters of mark briefly. Letters of mark. Um, so when nations are at war, you can buy a letter of mark from one, which will uh, permit you to attack the other nation and not suffer re a reputation hit with the nation you have a letter of mark from. It still gives you a reputation hit with all other nations. So let's say, I'll give you an example. Let's say Spain is at war with everyone. And I buy a letter of mark with the other nations. So I have a letter of mark against Spain from France. I have one from Holland and from England also against uh, Spain. If I attack Spanish ships, I will get a reputation gain from all those other three nations. And I will still lose a bit of reputation with Spain for attacking their boats. Let's say at the same scenario, though I don't have a letter of mark from France and I attack Spanish ships, I will get a reputation bonus for attacking Spanish ships with the other two nations, but for with France, I will lose a little bit of reputation, and with Spain still, I will lose a bit more reputation. Why is that? It's I think it's because if you don't have a letter of mark, you're not authorized to attack nations. You're considered a pirate, and therefore, all other nations that do not authorize you to attack a certain nation, they consider you a pirate and an outlaw, and they you lose reputation. I think that's why. And that was probably historically accurate. Okay, fleet. Uh, let's get into fleet fighting. So I'm going to get my warmonger here. And we're just going to attack 
uh, that axsmith. So I've got the axsmith sitting right here. So that is up here somewhere. So we're going to fly over there, or sail over there. And I'm going to show you uh, a fleet battle. An advanced fleet battle. We're talking like the biggest ships. And he'll have probably a full 10 fleet, but I'll still win. Okay, here's the fleet battle. Um, so there's this, the captain's name. He's got nine ships, and look at his total cannons is greater than mine. So I'm at a disadvantage, but I will win. Uh, so I'll go manual. So here's the fleet battle. One thing, actually, strangely enough, I had not, did not know about this game for a while, is you can use the mouse wheel to zoom out. I had always been playing like with the standard view, and it was kind of annoying sometimes. Uh, but you can zoom out. So there's my ammo. There's all my ships. This is one thing that's absolutely superior about Port Royal 1. Port Royal 2 um, only lets you fight with a few ships. Um, same with Patrician, which also sucks. But Patrician's a good game. I don't. I wouldn't badmouth Patrician, but I wouldn't badmouth PR 2 and 3 for sure. Um, fleet battles, big fleet battles, are only in PR 1, which is really unfortunate. So let's. The first thing I do is I look at their ships. So what do they got? A couple galleons here. Uh, and then some crappy stuff. Oh, some Karaks. So they're not. I guess I shouldn't say they're crappy, but certainly no liners to worry about. Um, so there's my ammo types. I do not recommend that you, at any part of the game, unless you're just screwing around, I do not recommend you cannonball anything. If you use cannonballs, not only does it take a while to to blow the ship up, like. Sometimes pirates come out, uh, attack you with only about half uh, half health. Their boats are kind of burning, but they still attack you anyways. If you, um, so it's sometimes it's easy to, to sink them. But there's really no economic advantage of sinking them. You might as well just take the boat if you can. And if you use cannons, so does your opponent. And he will damage. You'll, you'll, pro you'll probably still win. You probably won't lose a boat from it being sunk, but he will damage your boats, and it just sucks. So don't bother with that. Every single battle, I always just grape shot everything. Grape shot all the way. I do a crew battle. I don't bother with blowing up ships. Uh, I only do that for screwing around. If some stupid pirate attacks me with brigs, then I will sink his ass. But otherwise, I will um, take his stuff. I will grape do a, a crew on crew battle. So grape shot battle. If you do a grape shot battle, the opponents will always chain shot you down, and it's really irritating, especially near the ending of the battle, uh, because your boats get really slow. So you have to be careful of that because that can hurt you in the end. That can really be irritating, and that's going to happen here. But I'm just going to warn you now. So let's so now let's get started with the battle. So what I do as a strategy, I try to keep my boats together. Um, so what I do is I tell them all to attack the main boat. And then I just change a couple things. So I tell him to attack that one, him to attack that one. I leave everything else the same. I, you, you do not want to have your ships all over the place doing like one-on-one -on -one battles over here, and one-on-two over there. And You don't want to do that. You want to keep them close together. And you want to keep your ships near them because you can have, you can have shots going up from both sides. The cooldown, a lot of times in these kinds of games, You'll have a set cooldown for, sh for shooting once, and then you have to wait for a whole cooldown. And not in this game. You shoot, every side has its own cooldown. So you can shoot out here and shoot out here, and you'll, they'll be on separate cooldowns. So that's what you want to do. You want to get your boats in between their fleet so you can blast them on both sides. And that's how you really nail these guys. And of course, once their crew starts getting down, like below 30, you'll want to take them immediately. Because if you take the ship, he's got 30 crew left, you board him, you uh, kill all his crew, you disable the ship, the ship is no longer cannoning you anymore. That's what you have to do uh, to win these battles. So let's start. Start with the space bar is how you get it started. And uh, here, here we go. Uh, so wind speed and wind direction don't really matter too much. Uh, especially when most of the fleet you are letting them navigate on their own all I do near the beginning here is I get my ships to kind of uh, go in between other ships like this because I want them to cannon 
all of them. Like double cannon them. Like get those four floors, or or is it three? Those four, three or four floors of cannons on these big battleships. I want them just to blast the hell out of them. Every single, like every side of those cannons. So look at this guy's got 42. I'm gonna come over here and take him. This 20, I'm gonna nail out right now. And okay, that's gonna happen. So that's guy, that guy's dead. I'm just gonna look for other ships. There's 15. So he's gonna lean into that one. Lean into him. See, I'm having him turn. Lean into him and take him out. So that ship's gone too. There, gone. Okay, next one. Take that. I uh, take off the uh, the board. Now another thing, got to be careful about. Once ships start getting nailed, especially that first one, your ships. There's another one. It's only 27. So nail him. Uh, these guys are over here fighting. Oh, here. There's one. 17. So take him out. That's not a good fight. See, 86, 81. That's not good. So I'll tell him to, to move over there. Um, you got to be careful if you if you the, the main ship that all your ships targeted at the beginning. If he gets taken out of the battle, then all your ships are going to be sitting idle because their target's lost, right? Their target's been taken out. Here, get that guy, 35. Get him. See, notice that the sails are getting killed because those those guys are using chain shot on me. It's really annoying. Okay, he's gone. Take him. What do we got left here? Uh-oh. I got... See, he hit me there, and he's going to take that boat, but that's okay. I can't get to him but, uh, the, at the moment, so... He's going to have to take that win. Get him. 10. He's only 10. Come on. There. Good. Okay. Everything's fine. There. Lean into him. Uh, here. Get him. Okay. So notice the battle is pretty much over. Uh, I'm just cleaning up his ships now. Another thing you should know is that pirates will never run. Um, only nations will run. So if you fight a nation... Um, they all have a couple battle type ships with cannons, but many of their ships will just be merchant ships, and those merchant ships will always try to run away. So you may have to chase them. Okay, he's getting taken out. And we've got this guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's. Yeah, he'll eventually get him. Okay, I'm going to have to send send somebody over there. Over there. there, that guy's taken. So that was pretty easy. Okay, so he's probably gonna. Well, actually, if he runs into my boat, he'll lose. Watch this. But I'll I'll win by him running into my boat. Yeah, I don't know why it does that. Uh, but if I don't know why it does that. Anyway, so you're done with the battle. You capture the good stuff. So I. Sometimes I interchange if there's a galleon that's really damaged on my side, like maybe this one, then I'll take his better one. But for the most part, uh, you're just taking his galleons that are in decent shape. Although it doesn't really matter because you can just get them repaired. So there, you get your 10. If it was a nation, they'd have goods. Pirates don't have goods unless they've just attacked somebody. For the most part, they don't have it. And then you just make sure that you get your full, full cannons and take all his ammo and there. That's it. That's an Axsmith battle. So then once that happens, you go into your uh, missions here, and it'll say, very good, you've, you've killed that guy. And so usually it says uh, um, the next thing you have to do is meet someone somewhere. Or no, maybe it's this one here. Oh, yeah. So kill an Axsmith. So I just did that. Uh, m meet this person in Cancun. So that's what I do for the next storyline mission. One thing I didn't mention, which I, I will quickly hear, um, other than I've got a, a fleet sitting in here that just has... Uh, colonists I've got enslaved I guess 2,000 colonists just sitting here I just use that just to uh, ramp up Midlands which is the size as, as uh, Charlestown but I just wanted to show you uh, one thing that I found actually uh, uh, quite useful just to harass other nations like I've been kind of been really mean to Holland this whole game uh, but one thing you can do is you can get pirates to join you uh, you can go to inns, and once in a while they'll be sitting in there. They'll be old. Oh, there's one right there, pirate. He'll take. He'll um. He'll share 30 percent of anything he, he takes, and you give them a galleon with full cannons, and then he supplies all the crew. Um, and you tell him where to attack. You can either tell him to go anywhere he wants, or you can tell him to to attack in certain regions, and that r really harasses other nations. Whether it actually does damage to them is probably not because even if you sat this whole game and attacked every single Holland ship you could find I don't think you can wipe 
I don't think it would wipe someone out, the nation. They just get more ships. It's just like an infinite supply of ships. and Or maybe based on the time it is, or maybe based on how many cities they have, they pump out so many ships, and it maybe be, there's four trading ships for every town they have, and even if they lose a few of them, they just get them back. That's probably how the game mechanics work. But I just wanted to show you this. I've got a pirate sitting in the Dutch area here, and he just harasses Dutch ships. And I get money. I'll show you that in a second. I get money for him. Let me just find him here. Who's that? Just a second. Who's, I don't know. That's probably a random pirate. Oh. Obviously, I haven't been doing any missions because I'm doing this stuff. I'm just looking for the pirate that I've got. Jeez, he's she's usually around here somewhere. Um, he'll, he's a single pirate with a name. Anyways, I don't know where he is, but I can show you what he's been, the money he's been making for me. Oh, there he is right there. There he is, Philip Smythe. He's a pirate, and he just runs around and attacks people for me. So I'll show you the, the money you get from that. You go down to trade routes, and you go to pirate list. There's my pirate. He's attacked 14 pirates, um, and uh, that's the total of money he's getting me, 45 grand, last attack, and he's still active, so he hasn't been killed yet. Although I don't even know how, I, may, I guess maybe he could be killed, but I don't know. Um, I've never seen that, but I guess he could be. A, he could lose a battle against a nation, but I don't. I've never seen that before. I, I don't think they. I imagine they're pretty good at what they do. So, anyways, this has been Advanced uh, Port Royal. Uh, leave any comments uh, uh, that you like, and if you want to see more of these kinds of videos uh, about a certain game, then just leave that comment as well. And, and I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, this video.